Hey, it's great to see all of you. I'm Justin Parmenter. These are my kids. I've got Baran. He's in kindergarten. This is Nora. She's in second grade. So it's great to see so many people turn out in the freezing cold to support our teachers and our students. Um, I'm a middle school teacher. Like I said, these are my kids. It's, it's such a rewarding job being their dad and watching them discover new things about our world every day. I have no idea where they'll be or what they'll be doing 12 years from now when their public education is complete. And so to, ha to help them on their journey of self-discovery, I'm counting on our state to provide them with a well-rounded education to nurture their creative minds and their healthy bodies. I think that we need strong arts, physical education, and foreign language departments to make those things happen for our kids in North Carolina. And I believe it's our state's responsibility to ensure that that happens. I'm also depending on our state to give my kids and their classmates classes when they get to fourth and fifth grade and beyond where their teachers can get to know them as individuals. That doesn't happen as often as it should when we have classes of 35 to 40 students. And we could see numbers like that if our school districts are forced to comply with this mandate but not provided with the funds to do so. Our class sizes at middle school and high school where they are already much bigger than they should be could swell and possibly as well. A little bit about the numbers where I'm from. In Mecklenburg County, we're gonna need more than 350 additional teachers and more than 200 additional mobile classrooms to comply with this law. Our school district's budget is due to our county commission on May 15th, just like it is for most counties in the state. We need to budget for the worst case scenario in advance of that deadline so that we'll be able to begin installing our mobile classrooms as soon as the school year ends to have them ready for class on August the 27th. We simply cannot wait until May for the Senate to begin discussing this issue. As a teacher, I would love to see smaller class sizes. My experience has showed me that more one-on-one -on -one time with our students can make a big difference in the lives of those children. But it seems very unlikely to me that our current General Assembly can find the will to fully fund the class size mandate both teaching positions and decent classrooms. We must not rob Peter to pay Paul. That's right. We can't make sacrifices that harm our children's futures just to provide somebody with a talking point for their political campaign. That's right. When it comes to the class size mandate and to other education reforms, we keep hearing our legislators refer to unintended consequences. I think that phrase, unintended consequences, speaks to a fundamental problem with our General Assembly in North Carolina. Deliberately involving all stakeholders to get a clear view of exactly how impacts of legislation will play out should be an automatic part of the process. That's right! Our leaders need to stop putting major education initiatives in the budget and then passing them with no transparency, no committee process, and no public debate. That's not what doing the will of your constituents looks like. The public has had enough of this practice of ramming through legislation that is so poorly conceived it already needs to be overhauled before it's even implemented. Finally, to the senators who hold the keys to solving this crisis, Senator Berger, Education Committee Chairs Barefoot, Curtis, and Lee, our school district budgets are due in May and we can't wait until then for you to begin talking about class sizes. We need you to repeal this unrealistic mandate next week. There's a line in North Carolina's Constitution that reads, the people have a right to the privilege of education, and it is the duty of the state to guard and maintain that right. The people are watching as the Senate begins its January session, and we're going to hold you accountable for doing your part to guard and maintain our children's right to a quality public education. Thank you.